Thanks for joining us on Nationwide. I am Dennis Adigun Louis. Thanks for joining us. In keeping with President Bola Hamid Tinubu's promise to support the transformation of the micro, small, and medium enterprise space in Nigeria, the Office of the Vice President, in collaboration with the Bank of Industry, is set to commence the disbursements of loans to MSMEs by January 2024. In a statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Job Creation and MSME's Office of the Vice President, Temitola Adekunle Johnson, the loans totaling about 75 billion naira will be given to small businesses across the country at an interest rate of 9%. The federal government at the bank will leverage existing platforms to provide the loans to small businesses targeting women and youths and collaborating with stakeholders across the public and private sectors to provide massive support for MSMEs, both in grants and loans. Meanwhile, the management of a commercial bank has recently approved an upward review of a loan scheme for MSMEs from 30 billion to 50 billion naira. The upward review, according to the bank, is to increase the number of beneficiaries of the bank's loan scheme and impact more lives. Speaker House of Representatives Tajuddin Abbas says the 2024 appropriation bill will be passed on Saturday, December 30th, 2023. The Speaker, who made the announcement at the resumption of plenary, gave a deadline of today, Tuesday, 19th December, for all standing committees to submit budget defence reports with agencies of government to the Committee on Appropriation. An appeal to all uh, committees that are unable to finish their budget defence and submission of their reports. They have up to 8 p.m. To today to finish the budget uh, engagements and also submit their reports for defense at the Appropriation Committee office. And uh, also want to inform you that uh, the official laying and passage of the budget will be slated for Saturday, 30 December 2023. In between these two dates, all other activities like harmonization and compilation and processing of the bill will take place. National Assembly correspondent Mitari Iqben reports that the House during Tuesday plenary also passed the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission Bill 2023, which seeks to grant the Commission enforcement powers in the monitoring of accruals and disbursements of revenue from the Federation account. Meanwhile, the National Assembly Joint Committee on Petroleum Downstream, Upstream and Gas is taking or tasking ministers overseeing such resources to take action towards reviving abandoned oil exploration efforts, mitigating climate change and the rate at which multinational companies are leaving the country. This was during the 2024 budget defence by the Ministers of State before the Joint Committee. National Assembly correspondent Isa Mohammed has details. Other issues at the top of discussion during the budget defence are putting oil refineries in good shape, environmental degradation, global warming, implementation of Petroleum Act, stemming oil thefts, and use of general gas as alternative to petroleum on how it affects Nigerians and revenue generation. We seem to forget that we handed over the refineries, drilling, exploration, everything about the oil to NNPC. NNPC will come here to even show us their budget. Then most questions I think we will ask. We want a Federal Minister of Petroleum Resources that will not only be robust, it must be vibrant and proactive. They are really challenged to ensure that we have a certain environment 
in as much as we must continue to take advantage of our fossil fuels. The whole essence of the PIA was to make NPC a commercially viable company. So I could make profit for Nigeria, like the Aramcos, like the one in Brazil, and all that. And so it's not meant to be captured in this budget. There's nothing about refining rehabilitation that will be contained in the government budget. It's entirely the business of NPC Limited, and they are raising money through the private sector at the company to be able to do you know, the rehabilitation. Meanwhile, the committee assured the police of quality legislation that will provide enabling opportunities for the force to thrive. From the National Assembly, Issa Muhammad, NT. The federal government has reaffirmed commitments to zero tolerance for gender-based violence. Minister of Women Affairs Uju Kennedy Ohanenye re reacts to the incidents of an Uyo-based lawyer for battering his wife as seen on a viral video. I want Nigerians to know that the barrister that was battering his wife on the, on the social media, his name is Barrister Ebere Sunday Ebong, 55 years old, has been arrested. So all of you should calm yourselves and know that action, legal action, will definitely be taken. The Women Affairs Ministry have waged in. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's renewed hope agenda has waged in. And nobody will stop us. We must charge him to court. It's not between he and Minister of Women Affairs. So that men will understand that after you've battered your wife and you go to beg her to plead on your behalf, it's not and will never work. Minister of uh, Women Affairs Uju Kennedy or Han Nenye. In the meantime, farming equipment and other skills acquisition accessories worth 210 million naira are what the federal government will be dispersing to indigents of Chibok community with a view to revitalizing the economy of the area affected by insurgency. Monso Damien Dati reports that the Ministry of Women Affairs will be handling the project. Minister of Women Affairs, Barista Uju Kennedy Ohaneye, disclosed this when a delegation from Chibok community, led by its district head, Engineer Amadou Usman, paid her a cuts visit in Abuja. Starting by opening account, boarding them in the um, portal, and then other things we follow, like now giving them the sustainable machines, teaching them how to do this farming, how to produce certain things, how to ride the KK, to enable them take off the work immediately. When you empower a woman, you empower 20 people. So this is why it is very important that we focus on women, which is what the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu emphasized on. This program is going to help the family from top to bottom. And this program is for the people at the grassroots. According to the minister, the funds were raised after due consultations with the management of the American University, Yola, to invest back 50% of the monies paid by the federal government, a school fees for the kidnapped Chibok girls, into assisting the affected families and entire community to improve their standard of living. Mom so Damien Lati, NT News. The renewed hope agenda of the present administration will prioritize education as it remains a key component for human capital development and national growth. Vice President Kashim Shatima stated this in a message to a reunion dinner awards night organized by the University of Meduguri National Alumni Association in Abuja. Olain Kaojo reports that the university established in 1975 with 66 students now boasts of over 74,000. It was a gathering of alumni members of the University of Maiduguri from all walks of life. The reunion is aimed at raising funds to support the less privileged in the academic pursuit. The funds we raise tonight will not only support future generations, but will also contribute to excellence. See what other associations are doing. We must do better. Vice President Senator Kashim Shachima represented and lauded the achievement of the University of Maiduguri since its inception. While urging the members of the association to give back to their alma mater, the Vice President assured of government support for the education sector. No stone will be left unturned 
to develop the educational sector. This will be done, like I said, in accordance with the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu. We can make a difference. No effort is little. Despite the insurgency, which has lingered in Bruno State for more than a decade, the university has remained a beacon of learning as it was never shut down for even a day. It is a university that is thriving on a well-established foundation. The event also created an avenue to honor some outstanding alumnus of the institution for their selfless contributions to education and humanity in general. Online Kaujo, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide. We'll have more reports after this break. Stay with us. Thanks for rejoining us. Now, it may have been a recurring event for Ikiri Ebong, a legal practitioner whose neighbors alleged is uh, notorious for physically abusing his spouse without accounting for his deeds. A recent viral video, however, brought his actions to public knowledge with the commensurate outrage. Mr. Ebong has now been arrested for the alleged crimes of spousal abuse, as Eddie Diong Iba tells us more. The viral video of an alleged wife battery by the husband recently in the social media space is the reason for these protests by women in Aquibum State, organized by the State Women Affairs Ministry. To make sure that the prestige of the bar is kept, we are assured that our sister, a Kemini, will surely have Justice. The Nigerian Bar Association do not promote, encourage, or support violence, either from our colleagues or from other members of the public, because we stand for equity, fairness, and justice. Just as the women took to the streets in Uyo in protest, the police apprehended the suspects. Our commission of police is gender sensitive. Yes. Very gender sensitive. Yes. We can never allow any stone to be left on Correct. <laughs> Meanwhile, the government of Aquibum State in a statement condemns in strong terms the acts of gender-based violence and says it would ensure that justice is served in line with the provisions of the law against gender-based violence. The government is also calling on the Nigerian Bar Association to also institute disciplinary measures to punish Mr. Ebong. Mr. Ebong is to have his day in court after investigations are concluded. In Uyo, Edidi Ongiba, NTA News. Well, uh, joining us live now from Uyo is Edidi Ongiba with details of the arrest of the lawyer. Edidi Ong, tell us uh, about events that led to the arrest of the accused, who reports say is actually in the legal profession. much um, on Saturday the social media space especially the Aquabum social media space was inundated with this viral video of a, a man who is said to be a lawyer barrister Ebon Ekere you know assaulting his wife the neighbors came to her rescue and did the video which was seen online from what from the conversations um, this happened as a result of an issue with keys and resulted in her being assaulted and um, the man beating her up and all of that from also the conversations that we hear in the video the neighbors say this has been going on for quite some time now and for about um, four years um, now that this woman the man keeps assaulting his wife but this time it went public because the neighbors came to the rescue of the woman that's basically what happened in that video. That's how the public got to know. All right, uh, Edi Diong, um, four years is quite a long time. What's the reaction uh, from the people there to one who should be upholding the law rather than uh, breaking the law rather than upholding it? And uh, what is their view on the alleged uh, domestic uh, violence being meted out by uh, this man to his spouse? What's the reaction of the public there? of the public is quite in condemn condemnation of the act. Um, yesterday, the Akwaibum women, 
led by the Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Welfare, were on the streets to protest these acts. And from wherever they went to, there was um, this public outcry that justice had to be done and justice had to be served. And of course, the state government, too, in a statement, has condemned the act and, of course, has ins insisted that justice would have to prevail in this case to serve as a deterrent for others. Uh, lastly, uh, Didi Young, aside from what the state government have said, what measures are they putting in place uh, that you're aware of that, uh, to stop gender-based violence and ensure justice for any potential victims in the future? What is the state government doing? The state government, starting from the last administration, they had set up the Aquabum State Gender-Based Violence Management Committee and is automatically head by the, headed by the wife of the governor. And the aim is to ensure that um, justice prevails and that when victims come out, they are protected and then, of course, justice prevails. Interestingly, the VAP law, the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Law, which has been domesticated in the state since 2020, has been translated in the three major languages, indigenous languages of the state. And this is to ensure that advocacies get to the grassroots. All right, uh, Edith Young, many thanks uh, for giving us that update. And we certainly hope that uh, this uh, menace will be put to an end over there. Thank you. Let's uh, talk security now. And troops of Operation Hadrin Daji have rescued 13 persons kidnapped by terrorists from Mutunji village in Maru local government's area of Zamfara state. This was as a search and rescue operation was conducted by the troops in the area. The kidnapped victims were abandoned by the fleeing terrorists. Those rescued are currently undergoing medical treatments and will be handed over to representatives of the Zamfara state government to reunite them with their families. Meanwhile, the troops have cleared a notorious terrorist hideout at Gidanjaja Forest in Zurumi local government area of Zamfara State. During the operation, 11 suspects, suppliers of logistics to the terrorists were also arrested. The suspects were intercepted while conveying 127 bags of assorted grains in two trucks to the terrorists. All right, it's now time to join uh, Hingano in our Lagos Network Center. Hingano, it's over to you. Thank you, Dennis. Nigeria can no longer celebrate incremental progress in its revenue generation as there is need to accompany it with a transformational shift in the quality of spending of its generated revenue. The Chairman Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms, Taiwo Oyedele, started this when he paid a courtesy visit on Governor Baba Jide Songolu at the State House in Marina, Ese Onwamaka reports. The visit to the Lagos State Governor by members of the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms, led by its chairman, Taiwo Oyedele, is part of the extended consultations with subnational stakeholders aimed at developing a viable tax administration framework for the country. The reality today is that, you know, if everybody that has been elected into power, everybody that has been appointed, and even the civil servant decide not to collect a dime, Nigeria will still be a poor country because our spending as a ratio of, of GDP is one of the lowest in the world. So we then need to focus on how do we address the issue without taking anything away from the quality of spending and transparency and the rest of it. Governor Babadide Sawalu disclosed that the state had the capacity to expand its tax base and enhance efficiency in collection mechanism, but the state's efforts had been hindered by bottlenecks imposed by the fiscal and tax administration framework. Part of the, the activity of the committee, you know, especially you know, um, um, on the monetary side, is to see how we also can plug some of the holes that are in the, in the system, you know, and let's speak truth to agencies that are affected, you know, and um, be able to bring out the issues and, and do things differently. Um, I dare say that of what uses some other sectors declaring huge profitability. Um, when the larger um, customer base that they are meant to be serving are not any better. 
Lagos State is the first stop in the nationwide consultation by members of the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms. In Lagos, S.A. Omamaka, NT News. Talking security now for industrial security personnel firms to remain relevant in the age of security technology drive, constant training and retraining of personnel is required to keep them abreast of innovations and technological know-how in industrial security awareness. This is the conviction of stakeholders in industrial securities in the country while responding to their preparedness for technological innovations in industrial security in Nigeria. Larry Bile has details. Generally called private security outfits, this part of the nation's security architecture offers employment opportunities to the teaming youths while operations have been made easier with improved technologies like artificial intelligence, which can detect and assist data and biodata anomalies through fingerprints, eye capturing, user behavioral patterns in real time, either in cyberspace or physically. The deployment of these technologies come with some changes like the use of identification cards. Now there is a renewed appeal that the hat that established industrial security should encompass technology security rules so as to curtail some challenges that come with the changes. The act you know, that has uh, brought about the existence of uh, the private security companies in Nigeria is, 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 is obsolete. And so, and the global best practice now is to, you know, uh, uh, introduce technology into security. And so, uh, we are, there are plans on ground by government to actually repeal or reenact or uh, amend the Private Guard Companies Act. There's a need for people to get to train themselves, get to understand the technology and how and the benefits that it brings to them and the value that they will add to even their clients when they use those technologies. Experts are also advocating that private security personnel need to be equipped with modern tech to remain relevant in government and private establishments. In Lagos, Larry Bilei, NTA News. That's it from here. It's now back to Dennis in Abuja for the continuation of the news. Thank you, Hingino. Now, the Zamfara state government's recently unveiled its plan to recruit 4,200 security protection guards as part of measures to strengthen the efforts of security agencies in combating terrorism and related crimes across the state. The first batch of guards is billed to be deployed before the end of the year. Jamilu Ibrahim gives us an overview of the initiative. Combating the acts of terrorism bedeviling Zamfara State for more than a decade now topped the list of the campaign promises of Governor Adu Dalawan to the state electorate. As part of steps towards the fulfillment of the promise, the Zamfara State Executive Council has since in September this year approved the recruitment of 4,200 community protection guards with 300 of them to be drawn from each of the 40 local government areas of the state. This, according to the governor, is meant to strengthen the effort of the security agencies in combating the protracted security challenges. To provide a legal backing for the initiative, Zamfara State House of Assembly has already passed a bill that provides a law for the establishment of the guards, which was subsequently assented to by Governor Lowell. The first batch of the newly recruited guards, numbering more than 2,600, are currently undergoing training preparatory to their deployment. Governor Lowell, who recently visited the trainees at the camp, said Zamfara State Government is committed to providing all what is required for the guards to operate effectively within the ambit of the law. Very, very happy and excited seeing the people and their morale, which means they are ready and they are committed to serve. Some stakeholders who described the initiative as long overdue, however, stressed the need to ensure that the guards operate strictly in line with the let down rules. So we hope, first of all, the government will make sure that the implementation is smooth and efficient. They must not be allowed to operate without the conventional security agencies. Because if they are allowed to operate on their own, then certainly they will go out of bounds. Meanwhile, the Zamfara State Community Protection Guards are expected to be deployed before the year runs out. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTN. 
Well, Jeb Milu joins us live now from Guso for an update on what key players in the security sector are calling a move in the right direction. Jamilu, 4,200 is no small number. Do you think this number will cover the security needs of Zamfara State? Uh, thank you, Dennis. Uh, good evening. We are live in Guso. As rightly captured in the background report, the security community protection guards conceived uh, within the past four months by Zamfara State government has almost become a reality now with the first batch of the guards numbering more than 2,600 currently undergoing training at the camp preparatory to their deployment. Uh, the 4,200 uh, built to be recruited from across the forty local government areas of the state is just a start according to the steering committee which is headed by the state deputy governor Malamani Malamamuni. According to the steering committee, uh, the recruitment will be a continuous exercise depending on the uh, resources and the need for the uh, community protection guards to be uh, recruited. So it is just a start, the 4,200, and they are now starting with the 2,600. Immediately after they are graduated and deployed, it is expected that the next batch will follow. Uh, Jamilu, um, what is the government saying about the recruitment process? Is this expected to be uh, on a yearly basis? So I uh, earlier said the recruitment process uh, starts now with 4,200, with 300 to be recruited from each of the 40 local government areas uh, of the state. And it is important to note that each of the 147 wards of the state will be fully represented in the recruitment exercise according to the steering committee. So it is going to be a continuous one, depending on the need and the available resources uh, by the government. All right, uh, Jamilu, many thanks for giving us uh, the update on that uh, new initiative. Thank you. We're still talking security as uh, Minister of Defence, Mohamed Badaru, has uh, reiterated the commitments of the federal government to improving the welfare of members of the armed forces and their families. This was at the inauguration of accommodation for personnel of the National Defence College. Defence correspondent Ismail Musa has details. With this symbolic ceremony, the personnel of National Defense College can now boast of enhanced accommodation. What we are witnessing today is the culmination of the lofty efforts of my predecessors in office. All these are geared towards alleviating the shortage of staff housing in the college. And this edifice embodies one of such welfare supports that we give to our personnel to enhance their productivity. The accommodation facility, the minister noted, is a testimony of the importance government placed on personal welfare. As we gather here, we reflect on the sacrifices made by our military personnel in the service of our dear nation. And this accommodation is a tangible expression of our gratitude and recognition of their dedication. The project situated at Ushafa in Buari Area Council of Abuja comprised two blocks of 22 bedroom flats. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Child abductions are on the another dimension in Umahia, the Abia State capital. In the space of about two weeks, the state is dominating the public fora with news of missing children. Chika Okuria reports on the alleged disappearance of four female children who lived in the same compound in the state capital. At number 18 Owalaka extension by Osa in Omahia is where the incident of four missing children from three different parents took place on 17th December 2023. According to some of the residents, Life started on a normal footing at the dawn of that fateful day as everyone went about their normal engagement without any premonition that 
the prime suspect and tenants of this particular one-room apartment were incubating an evil plan. I was not around, Sha. When I came back, I now start hearing cry, shout. So they called the landlord. See, see, see what is happening. Uh, your tenant that he rent, just rented, uh, they have taken away our children. Uh. Like the woman said that the, she has problem with the husband. So he now moved the children to this place. Now, what story is she going to tell the husband? One of the affected mothers, Mrs. Ngozi Kinsley, who narrated her ordeal, said the female children were between the ages of six and three years. New tenants parking park in our house, new. New tenants on Thursday, they park. Tomorrow morning, which is uh, Saturday, I used to go to village market. My senior sister, they come with her children from village. They are living with me. Four children. My own one, who's a trauma, and my sister children, two, Obonne and Joy, and Miracle, my neighbor child also. One of the children is my grandchild. Her mother died during childbirth last month, and her corpse is in the mortuary. The mother took, took four, four children and gave them rice, and they now eat. From there, you now see the woman, the two women. She also hinted that their landlord and an agent who assisted the women in getting the apartment were under investigation. However, efforts to speak with the police did not yield an expected result, but there was an earlier confirmation of the incident through a press release. From Omaha, the Abia State Capital, Chika Okore, NTA News. Ability, they say, is in disability and therefore there is the need to promote an understanding of issues faced by persons living with disabilities and mobilise support for their dignity, rights and well-being. The Minister of State's Education, Professor Tanko Sununu, brought up these facts at the commemoration of the International Day for Persons Living with Disabilities. Christiana Apande has details. Faiza Yusuf is a student of Greenfield Pinnacle, Abuja. She exhibits her ability by painting aesthetic pictures, but due to her condition, Down syndrome, there is this challenge of maintaining the high cost of caregivers. This is besides experiencing stigmatization. That is why at this year's celebration for persons living with disability, stakeholders are re-emphasizing rights of this group of persons to education, medical care, inclusivity, and employment. In this regard, the Ministry of Education has deemed it fit to champion the course of persons with disability through the development of national policy on urbanism, national policy on special needs education, and the national policy on inclusive education. Findings revealed that the children with disability are rejected from the public schools because of lack of facilities and caregivers. This discrimination must stop by the collaborative efforts of all stakeholders. The support of the Federal Ministry of Education in this celebration has proven the fact that the Ministry believes so much in promoting inclusivity in education. We are committed to not just the SDG goals, but the goals that are valuable to humanity. Education materials were presented to all participants to encourage an inclusive education. In Abuja, Christiana Akondi, NCA News. You are still watching Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We'll take another break. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Nationwide. Let's now link up with Fatima at our Makodi Network Center. Hello, Fatima. Welcome and thanks for joining us in Makodi. Stakeholders in the economy sector converged on Government House Makodi to brainstorm and explore avenues for collaborative growth so as to unlock the potentials of investment in the state. This was at the maiden edition of the Benue Local Investors Forum. Simbiot Agbaji reports that the Deputy Governor, 
Sam Ode declared the event open. Benue State, according to research, has a gross domestic product GDP estimated at $5.8 billion. Benue State is also the second largest economy in the North Central region, offering a promising environment for investors seeking diverse opportunities. It is to this end that investors from across the country converge on the new hall of the government house in Makudi to exchange ideas, build partnership, and push towards a brighter future for Benue. The governor, represented by his deputy Sam Ode, while declaring the event open, says, Benue economy, though agrarian, expressed hope in the investors and partners to offer jobs and services to boost the economic life of the citizens. We are potentially a very rich state, you know, but if you look at the index, the poverty index, you can see where we are. It's not a good news for us. So for us, rather than those indices discouraging they will propel us to move the state forward. We have you know, brought this first edition, um, which is one of its kind, to ensure that we drive businesses in the states. We notice that the states, uh, we are doing well, but the indices are not where we want to be, so we want to project forward. We want to increase the GDP of Benue from 5.8, where it is today, to 8.1%. The government needs take into account all those areas that will make them competitive, whether it is in terms of cost of production or cost of trade. The government needs to avoid overtaxing investors. He called on the Benue people to be united for the development of the state irrespective of tribe and political affiliation. In Makudi, Simbiat Agbaji, NTA News. Hamatan season usually presents diverse health and environmental challenges that can be averted if necessary precautions are taken. This is the submission of fire safety officers in Makudi Benue State as the call for an urgent action to curtail outbreak of fire disaster in our homes, work and public places. Moses Ajau Ode has more. The fire outbreaks have continued to impact negatively on people's lives and businesses. Despite enlightenment and warnings against this menace, it persists with high cases during the hammer time or dry season. This is to guard against the disaster that some business owners and residents of Makudi are calling on relevant agencies of government to intensify awareness campaign, especially as the hammer time season sets in. Generally, people are uneducated about the use of fire generally. Particularly electricity, which is the major source of uh, fire outbreaks in our, in, our, in our towns and villages. Yes, let's say we go to the villages, even to the rural area, especially chief, the tax orator, to advise some young ones by burning bush anyhow. They maintain that to reduce its reoccurrence, necessary firefighting equipment must be readily available at all times. The state and federal firefighting agencies, however, assure the people that they have synergized to tackle imminent fire disaster in the state. Disaster handling is not a one-man show. Uh, you know, we are entirely on disaster management, not just firefighting. Uh, and we can't do it alone. We need other agencies to collaborate with, to be able to uh, handle it properly when it occurs. As we speak at the moment, we have uh, taking our campaigns to the major markets in Benoist in Makodi, seeking the uh, enlightening them and uh, seeking their uh, cooperation with us to do the best much we can to avert fire disasters this year. Sources from the relevant authorities reveal that in the year under review, more than 10 cases of fire incidents were reported across the state. Fire, as we all know, is a friend to no one, and as such, Necessary precaution must be taken to avoid falling a victim of fire disaster. In Makudi, Moses Ajao Ode, NTN News. And that's it from Makudi Nationwide continues in Abuja with Dennis. Thank you, Fatima. The fight against child abuse has received a further boost with the launch of end violence against children, community-based child protection structures in Ebony State. 
Chin Nazar John reports that the essence is to give communities a legal footing for prompt handling of cases of violence against children. Most children in Nigeria face one form of abuse or the other, and according to UNICEF, no fewer than five out of a hundred of these children who report violence receive prompt attention. This is often due to some bottlenecks in these social institutions, which sometimes even expose these children to more harm. To change this narrative by giving prompt attention to cases of violence against children, Mommy, he formed the flag of, of the End Violence Against Children Community-Based Child Protection Structures in Ebony State. The government and the good people of Ebony State we create an enabling environment for these child protection actors. Totally invest in them, giving them the necessary care, protection and nurture. Obviously, the future is at stake. Apart from the social workers, security outfits who are known for handling some of these cases, this structure is projecting a community approach in tackling violence against children. We have westernized everything our value system. Once we have seen an issue of abuse, neglect, exploitation of violence related to a child, make the report to the appropriate structure in the community and they will escalate it. The community will be gingered and charged you know, to better protect children in the communities where we are. Because all these events happen most in our own domains. And I implore my fellow traditional leaders to carry out this exercise. Stakeholders could not hold back as they appended their signatures, signifying complete commitment to ending all forms of violence against children. In our back looking, China Sajon, NTU News. As Nigeria joins uh, and China continue to strengthen ties, efforts at exploring new technologies and revamping Nigeria's textile industry are key. This was at the event organized by the Chinese Embassy in Abuja. Clothing is not just a material. It is a rich depiction of culture and a language that adds beauty to our heritage. <laughs> Fashion, aside entertainment, also seeks to promote coexistence, cultural exchange, and strengthen economic potential between nations. Guests at this fashion show say the Nigerian textile industry is pivotal. In 30 years, you'll be looking at an industry because uh, with the creation of the ministry, it means that you're thinking about creative economy now. It has gone beyond arts, it's gone beyond culture, it's about the reaping, what you reap. It will be easier for us, as Nigerians even, to explore the market. Say no man, you know, say no is uh, China. MA is material because the China and the Nigeria government have a very good relation and we came here to invest in the industry. I think uh, culture is a very good way. Through fashion show, we really can strengthen the mutual understanding between the peoples of China and Nigeria. Organized by Chinese Embassy in collaboration with Cinema Company is aimed at leveraging and boosting local textile industries in Nigeria creating and sustaining national development in relation to job creation and poverty alleviation for both countries. Juliana Nicholas, NTN News. In other news, Servicom has rewarded ministries, departments and agencies that have made a tremendous impact in driving policies of governments for development. This is to make service delivery more competitive and for public offices to be alive to their responsibilities. The CEO, Servicom, who gave this scorecard of MDAs, notes, however, that some of them need to brace up and tag along with the current trend in service delivery as laxity will not be tolerated in 2024. We'll be handing a template over to them, the 2024 work plan. We want to also have management endorsed, approved and endorsed work plan for 2024. That's a way of getting the CEOs and the um, minister, honorable ministers, the permanent secretaries to own the process of service improvement. 
The Nigerian Television Authority and the Nigeria Police were among agencies recognized for their outstanding performances in the year under review. As a familiar with the FC25, it means going forward, is the problems are enormous that we know, but we can start from our individual level, individual decks to see how we can start the change that we want to see. It is expected that MDAs align with the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinubu to promote quality service delivery and ensure good leadership. A bit on politics, the national chairman of the Allied People's Movement, Yusuf Maman Dantale, has emerged national chairman-elect of the Interparty Advisory Council, IPAC. This followed the expiration of the two-year tenure of Yagbagi Sani's executive council. Timothy Yusuf reports. Election of new executive committee members of the Interparty Advisory Council, IPAC, the umbrella body of all registered political parties in Nigeria. It was a keen contest between the immediate past chairman of the council, Yabagi Yusuf Sani, and the secretary, Yusuf Maman Dantele. National chairman of the Zenith Labour Party, Dan Wayangu, chaired the council's electoral committee. Alaji Waiwai Sani scored eight votes. Alaji YM Dantele scored 10 votes. The chairman-elect Dantele promised a new dawn under his leadership, while the immediate past chairman Yabaki Sani described his loss as the beauty of democracy. I will seek to establish a directorate of women affairs yeah. to ensure women inclusivity in policies is taken to a better level under my leadership. This is one of the things that defines democracy, any other form of which is having elections. The new IPAC-ESCO will be sworn in at a later date. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Up next is Sports Updates. We begin with football. It will be March the 6th on Wednesday in the Nigeria Women Football League when Atlantic's own newcomers Danas ladies in the Willy. Similarly, Nasarawa Amazons will entertain conference queens at the Lafayette Stadium in badminton. The Badminton Federation of Nigeria says it hopes to stimulate early competition amongst its players with the consistent staging of the National Badminton Classics. The tournament, which featured the top 16 male and female players in the country, returned after 24 years with the third edition. In the women's singles final, former Nigerian number one Jokas Adeshokan of Ogu State returned to winning ways, beating Sophia at Obanishola of River State two games to nothing. While in the men's singles final, African champion Anu Lua Payori maintained his top spot after beating rival Victor Ikechuku of River State in a repeat of the last national championship final. So everybody knows that what you do throughout the year is what will earn you a place in the top 16 to play here for the biggest prize money in Nigerian badminton. Of course, everybody will do very well to try and break into that top 16. Elsewhere, the Federal Polytechnic Adrekiti, a match champion of the 6th Collegiate Taekwondo Open Championship 2023, tagged when lightning strikes. The team won 16 medals, comprising 6 gold, 4 silver and 6 bronze to win the championship and pushed Ladoki Akintola University of Technology and Ocean State Polytechnic Iwe to 2nd and 3rd positions. In boxing, former British Commonwealth and African champion Olusha Gwajose and his colleagues under the auspices of Nigeria X International Boxers Association have pledged to technically grow boxing in Nigeria and help the country regain its prestigious position in Africa and at the global stage. In that group, there is wealth of knowledge and you know it's available to be used so that's what we want that's what we are trying to do to you know try to come out come out there and give uh, give our support at the launch of the association in lagos boxers were advised to prioritize education and management of resources while in active service with sports updates ulundi guntola nt news and sports update concludes nationwide. Thanks for watching. I am Dennis at Digun Louis.